Stay tuned for a very relevant March of Prophecy with Maura Cirillo and his dear friend of over 40 years, the late Charles Blair. It's the most important message of the hour. When will Jesus return? Dr. Blair traveled with Maura Cirillo to the nations of the world and taught in the schools of ministry. His teachings on the March of Prophecy are anointed, and together with Brother Cirillo, they will take you on a prophetic journey that will bless and encourage you in these end times. As prophetic events continue to unfold here and around the world, we need to be prepared for events that will have a profound impact on our lives and those around us. So call a friend and have them tune in. And remember, prophecy is not meant to scare you, but to prepare you. Are you ready? Here's the March of Prophecy with Mara Cirillo and his special guest, Charles Blair. Welcome to Victory Today. On Victory all this week long is my special guest, Dr. Charles Blair, world-renowned prophecy teacher, pastor for over 50 years in one church, and an incredible man of God used by God to teach in so many ministerial seminars. His ministry is in great demand in all different spheres of Christian activity, the charismatic, the evangelical, and I am so excited because Charles, you and I have been friends for mm -hmm. well over 25 years, yep. and I have seen a very special anointing for prophetic interpretation upon your life. And you're here to take us this week on victory through an incredible march of prophecy. What a great day we had yesterday. And because the time goes by so quickly, I'm going to be very short with my remarks to give you more time to teach and so we can tell the people, get your pencil in your hand and get a piece of paper to write down a phone number. I believe we're giving our partners and the viewers today and this week perhaps the most incredible prophetic offer that we have ever given to them. So I want them to be ready. You know, God called me to uh, not deal with details, but to give the overview so that we can understand it, so that anybody can understand it. So we teach this and give the uh, tools where anybody else can teach it. And, and our people are going to be able to get this incredible right. prophetic right. chart, which is going to take us through seven periods of church history right. and prophetic prophecies right. that will culminate in an incredible end on Friday. Amen. You know, I want to do this. Okay. I want to do this. You know, I, I just was hit with this anointing by the Holy Spirit. Okay. I would like this week to pray on Friday, in Friday's program, for all of your unsaved loved ones. That's beautiful. You know, I don't think you have an unsaved loved one that you don't want to get into heaven. And while we're talking That's about great. this culmination, leading us to the time when we're all going to go to heaven, I want to pray for your unsaved loved ones. I want your children, your grandparents, husbands, wives. Amen. I don't care what kind You'll of condition agree. they're in. So you get ready and stay with us all week long. And then Friday, we'll take hands together. No distance with God in prayer. That same anointing that's here in the studio right now is going to be right with you on Friday's telecast. We are going to take Satan's hands off of your unsaved loved ones and release them for the great gift of salvation. Well, we left off yesterday, important yes. place, mm -hmm. and I want to ask you, what happened after this age of innocence that you talked about, and then something messed up, it looked like God's whole plan for humanity. Mm -hmm. What happened? Well, you see, Satan, who had a free will, decided to rebel against God. Incomprehensible for us, but nonetheless true. Satan rebelled and God cast him out and he became the prince of the power of the air, this planet Earth. That is to say, Satan was 
then who was Lucifer, became Satan, and he was assigned this period or sphere of domain, including the earth. Here's the perfect earth that God created, perfect earth, full of beauty, full of light, full of order. God didn't create without form and void. God had a plan, and it was to be populated with his own people. But something happened. Between the first two verses, as Satan rebelled, God wanted to prove to Satan that he was not great in the sense of being able to recreate. So God withdrew himself from this planet Earth after he created it. It was perfect. God created a perfect heaven and a perfect Earth. We know that by the spade of the archaeologists. We know it by the work of understanding what we now see visibly. We know that the creation was not as it was when Satan was there, but it was what was perfect from the hand of God. Do you know that the sunrise and the sunsets, the harvest time, the seed and the harvest period? Yes. Do you know that I was fishing up in Alaska, Pastor? I was fishing up there, and my guide said, I want to take you over and fish for some black bass, and they're only in a certain area, but we got to hurry to get over there before the tides come, because the tides clash, and if we get caught in the churning of those waters, we'll perish, because we were in just a small fishing boat. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, all the tides have to go out, so they have to come back, so they have to meet somewhere, and then they come back. And we are just a few miles from where they clash. I said, oh, I've got to see it. We went over there and saw closer and closer. We sat at a distance where we were out of danger. And these two bodies of water, the tides that we just take for granted, began to move closer and closer until they clashed. And the water spewed up like Old Fountain in, uh, in, the, in uh, Yellowstone. And oh, maybe 45 minutes, the waters began to settle down. They were churning. And then like magic, those... Uh, Tides went back the opposite direction. He pulls out a little book out of his pocket, the fisherman, the guide, and he said to me, Charles, he said, in this book, it dates the time that these tides meet every day, and I happen to only have it till 2008, but I could buy another book because it is projected. We can time nature like wow. a sunrise or a sunset. Wow. We can time those tides. Now, God figured that out. You can go out into a cornfield, Morris, and pick an ear of corn and count the rows, and you'll never find an odd number of rows, always an even number. You, you see, there's symmetry, there's order, there is uh, the uh, law of gravity, there's okay. centrif centrifugal laws of Forces, uh, yeah. on and on. We could spend the rest of the time just talking yeah. about it was a perfect heaven, perfect earth. But what happened? Well, the devil came and God withdrew. And, and, and pardon this language, but God was saying, all right, Satan, you are a powerful created being, but you're limited. See what you can do with this planet earth. It was perfect there. Then it became chaotic because when God left, light was no longer there, mm -hmm. darkness. When God left the planet Earth, it was without form. It was just void. There was no order. There was no precision. There were no laws. All right, Satan, see what you can do with it. Satan is powerful, but he's not all powerful. Yes. He couldn't recreate. Then God came back on the scene, and we have then the perfect earth in second, uh, second verse of the first chapter of Genesis, and the earth became without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. Then God came back on the scene. Hallelujah. Now, Satan, here's a key point that I wished everybody would listen to. Yes. Satan could have been destroyed by God that moment when he rebelled against him. When Satan rebelled against the throne of God, God could have cast him into the lake of fire. See there? Yes. That's where he's going to wind up. Mm -hmm. At the end of the world, the end of creation, God's going to cast the devil in the lake of fire himself, and he shall be tormented day and night forever. Now, 7,000 years are between these events of human traced history. Satan could have been cast into a bottomless pit right here instead of 7,000 years later. Why didn't he? Well, God created then man with a free will. So God comes back on the scene, and instead of creating, 
That's why we have two records of creation in Genesis. It's not creation, it's renovation. He takes this that's without form and void, and he begins to re re -evaluate. Most people don't really understand that, well, uh, and, and it's not really taught. Well, the six days... That's are, real revelation. Right here. See, the six days, yes. he unfolds and he recreates, or the re uh, renovate, renovate. renovation like word. is the word I'm after. Yeah. And then on the sixth day, he created paradise, and he put a man in that paradise Hallelujah. and gave him a help meet, and that's the first period. That's called innocence. Innocence okay. is a period of time that we don't know how long it was that man was there innocent. Now, here's a key point. Oh, you know, Dr. Sorrell, I'd like to shout so loud that I can <laughs> let the whole world hear. God created man innocent, but not righteous. Mm. Big difference. Yes. Righteousness comes only to the one who is obedient to the will of God, who has to have the ability to be disobedient. Mm -hmm. That means that God's created us with a free will, as Satan had and as God has. And, if it, and righteousness can only come when you and I are obedient to the will of God. But we have to have the ability to be disobedient. So instead of Satan being cast into the lake of fire here, and doing it later was that God used the enemy, his revolting man, I mean, the created being, and allow him Satan. to go into the garden and became Satan. And you'll see on the chart there, Satan becomes the prince of the power of the air, and Satan regains dominion over this planet Earth and therefore has become... Renovated Earth. Yes, yeah. and the, and has become our enemy. So you see the snake is the, the the serpent's trail. You see him all across there, clear until he's cast into the lake of fire. We'll get in that a little later okay. this week. But this becomes the first slice of history called innocence. We don't know how long it lasted, but it lasted from the time that God planted two trees in that garden, <laughs> and there starts the story of redemption. In that garden, God created man with a free will. And man was given the opportunity to eat or not to eat of the forbidden fruit. For God had one Choice. restriction, yeah. don't eat of that tree. Yeah. That's my tree. Mm -hmm. Now, the name of the game is ownership. And when you and I own a piece of ground, we can put a fence around it and keep one another from going on. We can't trespass if it's my property. You can't touch it. The name of the game is ownership. So God wanted man to know, I'm the owner. It was all here when you got here. The fish was in the stream. The gold was in the mountain. The fruit was on the tree. It was all here. And I'm, you see, there are four laws that God wanted to get across. One was ownership. The other was ordership. I come first and you come second. Third word is stewardship. You're not the owner. You're the steward. You're going to care for it. We'll work as a team. And as long as you obey me and we'll work as a team, we're going to have fellowship with me. And the fourth, of course, is friendship. Mm -hmm. Relationship. How yeah. And so God was saying, this is my tree. And I put a fence around it. And don't you eat of the fruit. If you do, you'll die. They did. They died spiritually. They began to die physically. And the whole thing changed. But in that situation, and this is dramatic, it sounds like a pen of a playwright who wrote mm. some story filled with imagination. This, this man who sinned became naked. He realized he was naked. Now, why is that? Well, because when God created us, he created us in his own image. And the uh, garments, uh, Psalm 104, verse 1 says that God clothed himself with light, like God, like us. We were created, God, Adam and Eve, with garments of light, hmm. and it covered the nakedness of their body. But when they sinned, that light disappeared, hmm. and they said, I'm naked. See, God doesn't endorse nakedness. The body is sacred. And so they ran knowing they were, and they wanted to cover their nakedness, so they sewed leaves together, and God came down that day and said, Adam, where are you? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I, I'm hiding. Why? Well, I, I, we were afraid that you'd kill us we, because we were naked. And he said, no, come on out. And then you see, there is when he killed a lamb. Mm -hmm. And the great story of redemption and Hallelujah. the key to redemption, the key to redemption. Mm -hmm. You see, many religions leave redemption out completely. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people have read the Koran. I read it. There's no redemption. 
there is very little hope that a person who worships Allah as their God that have any assurance they're going to go to heaven. Because only at the last second says the Quran that not that, that person dying has no assurance unless you become a martyr, unless you give your life in suicide, and there's some other restrictions yes. in there, on and on. But my point is, we the, know about that right now. the story mm -hmm. of redemption is in the story. And oh, God yes. came down and said, here are the garments, and gave them garments from the skin of an animal. And here's the principle. The innocent had to suffer for the guilty. And only when the in I can't take back what I said, God says. I said, when you sin, you die. I can't change that. That's a law that'll never change. But I can let somebody else die for you. And so I'll let the lamb die, and I'll start a redemption story, and that redemption story is going to unfold until eventually that lamb becomes a man. And John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God yes. that taketh Hallelujah. away the sins of the world. And Isaiah said that that, lamb, that man would become a lamb and be led to the slaughter without any rebellion. And so that whole story of redemption and there's where we begin. So God then drives out the man and uh, starts a new dispensation. And that's where we have the period of time called the dispensation that ends with this flood. It ends that's with, called the period of conscience. Yes, now. innocence and then conscience, and conscience ends with the flood. And uh, that's the period of time when you remember that Abel and Cain were told to bring a sacrifice of a lamb. And uh, Cain refused. He brought some vegetables. But God said, no, it has to be slain with blood. Blood was mm. the life of the flesh. Blood is the sacrifice, means of salvation. That's why the blood that Jesus shed becomes redeemable blood, mm. incorruptible because it came from a virgin-born Savior. And that's why he was endless, sinless, and therefore was able to pay the price. So that lamb was to be slayed. And you'll see this lamb and the altar as a symbol through the whole unfolding of the plan. Therefore, Abel was killed in jealousy and was the first death down here into this grave, the very first death of a human being. And Cain rebelled against God. You know the story that Cain had a relative that was starting a, and built a city and it was, became the first polygamist. And it was a downward until so badly that... Uh, uh, it looked like God was going to have to pu uh, punish the whole earth. But something else happened. A new son was born to Adam and Eve by the name of Seth who found favor with God. And that favor continued in those generations until God saw a man by the name of Noah and he found favor with God, Noah did. And God said, I want to use you to build an ark. He said, I can't destroy the whole world because I promised here in the garden that out of the lineage, out of the seed of the woman would come a savior. So I can't kill everybody. I can't let everybody perish, so I've got an idea. I'm going to build an ark, and I'm going to let it rain. I'm going to let it rain till everybody goes into a watery grave except you and your family or anybody else that will come in the gangplank of faith and come into the ark of safety. And that was where the redemption story started. He stayed there 371 days, lived uh, in that ark, and came back and landed on Mount Ararat, Mount Ararat and another dispensation called human government. And then came that followed by promise, when the promise, when God looked to Abraham and there came that dispensation called promise, a promise of a savior, then came the period just before the church age where we live now. And this was the most exciting thousand years in all of, of all of history that we have. That's when Moses was dead and Joshua led now, and Charles, moved in. I, 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 oh, I, I, sorry. I, it's okay. I don't want to interrupt you. You got to interrupt but, me. But, you know, uh, it would be wonderful if we just had... One hour, two hours, three hours. Well, you know, that's the beauty of those tapes. Okay. They can have four hours <laughs> of tell, tell uninterrupted tape. Well, I happen to have a little part, and you had a great big part. You allowed me to come and teach for four hours to a live audience last uh, Labor Day but under you know, the anointing of the I, Lord. I want to tell our studio, or yeah. our, our studio, I want to tell our viewing audience something that you're doing. Uh, you have created this chart on a fantastic multimedia presentation big screens with all of the beautiful chart 
uh, depicted, and you teach, and on the screen comes all of these beautiful presentations visually showing what you're teaching. And that what was what was caught in this special four-hour presentation. So on these tapes, you're not just getting... Uh, and sitting here uh, in a studio teaching, but you're getting Dr. Blair teaching before, I don't know, over the course of the, the uh, times, it was thousands of people, and under an incredible died, anointing of the Holy Spirit with the multimedia so going and the chart being depicted stuff. live, and you are getting all of that, four hours of that teaching. Plus the chart plus the chart that yeah. we have here that you're going to receive. You're getting all of that teaching in this special March of Prophecy offer. I had to tell them that. Yeah. Now, you're going from place to place, city to city, with this chart, and you're showing it all over the United States and, and other parts of the world. Yes, yes, and we thank God for it. Now, the good part about it is that they put this through their television, and they can stop and start it, and they can see 30 minutes of it and then have a discussion. You can have a home group. You can have a Sunday school class. You can do it in your small church. You can do it in the front room of your own home. You can do it with just mom and dad. You can do it with your family. The good part about it is with the books that you have given them, and I don't have any books for sale. I got tapes only because <laughs> it's the live message and the chart that I spent 30-some years developing. This is the latest uh, of the update Very of the sure. art, and all of that until you can be as good a teacher as either of us because you're going to teach the same Word of God, and it's a powerful Word. It's alive. The Word is alive, and it'll bless. And I tell you, we've got to get into that uh, ark before the storm comes. Quickly, 30 seconds. Where are we going tomorrow in we're, the March of Prophecy? We're going to the most exciting part of history as of now because we're going to talk about these 2,000 years that we're now living in called the church age or sometimes called the age of grace. And this is the period of time that started with Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and ends with the rapture. So that's exciting because that's the signs of the time. And we're going to talk about... And we're living in those days well, right already now. already 2,000 years have passed. That's why we believe we're living right down there near the rapture and that the rapture is imminent. It could have, it, there's not a sign that needs to be fulfilled before Jesus can come. None. And, and remember, Friday's telecast, we are setting a time aside to pray for all of your unsaved loved ones. We don't want one of your unsaved loved ones to miss the glorious rapture. We'll see you tomorrow. Are you calling a friend? Please do it. Tell them. Brother Srillo has as a special guest, Dr. Blair, world-renowned prophecy teacher, and he's teaching us on the march of prophecy from Genesis to Revelation. God wow, Thank what you. an exciting week. We'll see you tomorrow. Now you can know the end-time prophetic events before they happen. And in this critical hour, you need the premier teaching of the March of Prophecy on DVD. Dr. Charles Blair, one of America's most renowned Bible prophecy teachers, takes you step by step from Genesis through Revelation using the magnificent March of Prophecy chart. Follow Dr. Blair through this amazing, revealing, detailed journey from the beginning to eternity, from creation through the law, the church age, and the millennium. Pick up the phone now and ask for your copy of the entire March of Prophecy series on DVD. For your ministry gift of support of $35 or more, you'll receive the four hours of Dr. Blair's teachings, plus the March of Prophecy chart. And when you call, as a special bonus, Morris Cirillo will send you a series of four books of revelation. They're hand-selected by Morris Cirillo from his brand new The Spirit of Prophecy series that includes The Rapture of the Church, The Opening of the Seven Seals, and A Message to the Seven Churches. So, please pick up the phone and call the toll-free number now. Ask for TV offer 6094, that's 6094, and receive the March of Prophecy DVD set, the March of Prophecy chart, and the four Spirit of Prophecy books. 
You can also order online or send your gift to the address on the screen. In these end times, you must arm yourself with these powerful prophetic gifts. Call now and they'll be sent to you promptly when you sow your ministry gift of $35 or more into the ministry. Act now and remember, as always, your gift supports God's victorious army that is on the march, led by Mara Cirillo in the nations of the world. For over half a century, God's servant Maurice Cirillo has shown unparalleled commitment to the nations of Europe. Now is your time to enter the season of God's overflow and fulfillment for your life, your family and your ministry. The legendary Maurice Cirillo World Conference is coming back to Europe. Joining Dr. Cirillo in celebrating his 67th year of ministry will be God's choice servants. Tommy Barnett, Todd Coons, Ayo Ritsujifor, Matthew Ashimalowo, John Francis, Andrew Adelecki. Alex Amokadu, worship leader Noel Robinson, plus worship teams from across London. People from every nation will be gathering at Westminster Central Hall, London, April the 18th to the 20th. Seating is extremely limited, so register today for only £10 to be a part of what will be the greatest move of God Europe has ever seen. How would you like to end your day with a peaceful reminder of God's love for you? Then go to mcwe.com and sign up for the daily Sweet Dreams devotional email. Sweet Dreams is a nightly devotional prepared by Morris and Teresa Cerullo. Receive this nightly spirit-filled reminder of God at work in your life. Included in the Inspired Devotional is Ministry News, a place for you to submit prayer requests and special spiritual resources available just for you. There's also a link to the latest Victory Today broadcasts on demand. Isn't it time to discover the wonderful things God wants to bring to your life? Then go to mcwe.com for your Sweet Dreams nightly devotional. God's peace for a restful sleep. Are you ready to experience the power of prayer? Then call our Helpline Prayer Partners now. Men ought to always pray and not faint. This is a great time for you and God to come together as one. God is always waiting to hear from His people. This is the time like never before to call on the mighty hand of God to meet you in your circumstances. The Bible says, have faith in God. Call now at the number at the bottom of your screen and let God meet your need. Now's the time to become a fan of Morris Cirillo on Facebook and Twitter. This is your opportunity to receive up to the minute news on what God is doing in these critical times. See exclusive videos and behind the scenes photos of Dr. Cirillo. Connect with Brother Cirillo on a personal level as never before as he ministers special anointed and prophetic messages exclusively for his online audience. Log into Facebook now for devotionals, ministry newsletters, book specials, and much more. If you desire, you can share your comments with other partners and believers all over the world. Also, for breaking news videos, be sure to go to YouTube. There has never been a better time or a better way to connect and stay in touch with more Cirillo World Evangelism. Please take note of the internet web addresses on the screen and connect today. Thank you for watching Morris Cirillo on Victory Today. For more information, call the number on your screen or write to us at P.O. Box 85277, San Diego, California, 92186 or visit our website at mcwe.com.